Well, I have to say that things like this are probably my favorite thing to do when I come to a place because um, meeting people and um, allowing everybody to be part of the whole thing is, 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 is my favorite thing. You have now inspired me to, to go back and play that piece again. <laughs> it's such a beautiful piece uh, with so many incredible harmonies. And I have to say, I have a lot to talk about when it comes to your playing, but before I do so, I would like to say that your sense of musicality is beyond a lot of professional guitarists. Okay. Um, you have an incredible sense of harmony and, and, and phrase. Um, and, and even though some things are, are not where they should be in your playing, uh, it just shines across very, very clearly and very impressively. Um, which I think is such a great sign for you um, that you should uh, uh, try to make that emerge even more. But the fact that it's coming out at this point um, is, is quite, quite extraordinary, actually, um, I think. Um, because even, you know, you, you, w when you play, there are things which, I, which we will talk about, but even with those things, you moved me. Thank you. And, and that's very hard to do. So, bravo for that. Now, okay. Your sitting is a disaster. <laughs> right. Now, if you want to be Taylor Swift, it's okay. And if that's what you want to do, great. I have no problem with that. I like Taylor Swift very much. But if you are playing classical guitar, in order for you, and it's a very hard instrument to play, I mean, it's like, you're never quite sure when you, with the guitar, the next day when you pick it up, what's gonna happen. And, and even with pieces which you played for a million years, every day to me, some, even when I'm on tour, it feels like I pick it up and it's, ugh, oh, today feels really different. And it's like a new struggle sometimes. And then, okay, you come to the concert, and then the adrenaline kicks in, you have to do it, and everything's fine. But, um, but uh, um, it's, it's a physically very hard instrument, so we have to maximize the usage of our body around the instrument. And even though I think your sitting position is rather cool, <laughs> I think it works for the image. <laughs> I was asked to play like that quite many times when I was doing TV shows and things because, you know, the proper sitting position it sounds very classical, but I always refused. Uh, because it's important to have a good sitting position. Now, can you please switch your legs, your feet with the, um, uh, the footstool? Yes. Okay, you're not happy there. Uh, I think the footstool needs to be slightly higher. And I like it the other way because then it's a bit higher, a bit more high. Okay. Just so that people can see. Okay. Now, if you do that, this is going to slip. I think this foot needs to come forward like that because you need to support it. Also, um, when I was younger, I used to constantly, while I play, chase my guitar around the stage. So what I do is this. There is a little non-slip pad that I put there. And I also have a little thing here. Look. So that it doesn't, doesn't slide. Because uh, when you start chasing your guitar around the stage, I mean, you end up in, 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 in total agony. Um, so um, I don't want you to do that. Uh, yeah, it's, all, it's, it's, it's much, much more natural like that. Slightly. Yeah. Now, you have a tendency to really numb your forearm by pressing it very, very hard here. And what that does is that even though it creates a sense of security, uh, what it does, it pushes the ligaments which directly move your fingers. So if, if something is cutting through your fingers, then you can't really move them freely. So what you have to try to do is to find the position of the guitar, which is, which is more here. And interestingly for me, 
even my muscles kind of developed around that. Uh, it, it, it's odd. You see a little curve here in my in my arm. Um, so because that's the kind of a place where the guitar should cut through and allow you to to navigate the color potential of the instrument as well. So I suggest to be a little bit more gentle. And, and then you see your hand position comes right in place. Your wrist is maybe too high, but you, you, will, you will adjust that. It's, it's kind of never like this, never like that. You know, just always as if, as if your hand is totally, totally relaxed. It's like that arm, yeah, that arm, right on the strings, bang on, what's natural, that's it. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Uh, the guitar you are using is, you probably know, not great. Yeah. Okay. And because you are grade 7, maybe you could see if you could have a better guitar or borrow a better guitar from someone, just so that you can really maximize what you have. Because what you have is really quite a lot. As I said, it's very special what you have in your feeling about the harmony and the music. Um, and I, I just want you to have all the, the tools for that to come out. That's all. Okay, right. Now, I think that your right hand is immediately behaving better with this sitting position. And if you practice your scales, your arpeggios, all of this other technical stuff we don't like in this position and just kind of explore how you can maximize. But please get yourself this. Yeah. It's very, very, uh, very helpful uh, to have uh, uh, something to really prevent your guitar from slipping. Um, it's like if you think about it, other instrument violinists do it with the, with the, with the shoulder rest and the thing so that it doesn't, doesn't slip. Um, we, we need that, because wood is slippery. Um, your left hand, thumb and the position, do you practice scales very much? No. Not really? No. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you did, your thumb wouldn't be really there. Okay. I think that all of those boring things, scales and arpeggios and all of that, that they really have a purpose because they set up your hand uh, to, to be in the optimal position. When I came to London, um, uh, I was uh, j playing everything that I wouldn't dare touch now. Uh, and Grand Overture, uh, Un Sueño en la Floresta, all of that huge stuff. Um, and I did it without practicing ever any scales or arpeggios or anything like that. I played tremolo at one point with two fingers because I was able to strike it three times. I, I mean, it's all of this crazy stuff. Um, and then when I came to London, my teacher said, no, you have to go back to simple studies, to, 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 to scales, to arpeggios. And the fact what happened to me was that my thumb was very far in the left hand and my little finger was up. And I remember to, uh, playing for David Russell in the very first master class uh, at the academy. Um, and he said, you're never going to be a great guitarist if your left finger is sticking out like this. And I was a bit sad. And then he said, well, that's what Julian Breen told me when I played for him. behind the second finger, there, and to cut your nails a bit. Yeah. Are, you kind of have nails on that hand, but not so much. I did, but I um, kind of bit them off. No, don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't bite them off. No. Don't. I think you should maybe put some thick bitter on your nails. Yeah. I don't know. What could she put on her nails so she doesn't bite them? Something. Okay. Uh, is that comfortable or not? Yeah, no, it is. Yeah? Because um, I kind of hunch over if I've yeah. got it on the other hand. Promise me you will never play like that yeah. other way again. Oh, yeah, I yeah? will. Yeah? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Good. Right. Um, 
Let's try very, very slowly, just the first two bars, so that I can check your left hand. Yeah, you see, you, you, you are... Look, try to reach from there and just just have your fingers as the, as the keys of the piano, you know? When you, when you see in, inside of the piano, you're, th there are these keys which go, and they don't go like this or, or like, li like this. They go like, like this. Yeah. So your left hand fingers, they really need to have that feeling. And don't bend your knuckles. I think I know. If you practice scales and arpeggios every day, this will all change dramatically. Really. And I think that that's very important. Also, before you play, do you do uh, exercises? No. Like on you should, the guitar? You should make a little routine. You know, I have, I have a routine uh, before I play. It's about, it's about half an hour. Um, and it consists of simply doing stuff like... <laughs> times and then spiders just open your fingers and open the strings all that kind of stuff and then you can do and with each finger and then the combination of each finger. because that completely for the right hand is the best exercise ever and then scales so to me it takes me about half an hour um, and it's a lot with metronome and when you have that bloody metronome is that a bad sorry that might be a bad word <laughs> um, if, if you have that terrible thing called metronome in front of you clicking for half an hour like this it really puts you in order I like it <laughs> and then after you can move on with your life and just be like, oh, okay. It's a, it's a bit like, yeah, exercising. Or it is exercising. It's boring, but needs to be done. But if you decide to do it, and you can really actually then enjoy it because you can discover things about your fingers. You say, you're not moving. Terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay. So I really want to do more exercises. Okay. And then everything will flow much, much better. Better guitar, if you could. Better sitting position. Well, even if you can't, you can tune your guitar a bit better. I think you're doing great. Just a couple of those very technical things. We need the technique, we need the hard work and all of that discipline just because that's the foundation of what you build later. You can't do it the other way around. You can't build a house from the roof. So, uh, practice hard, scales, maybe you can get a scale book or, or there are very nice uh, uh, methods out there, uh, nice things which people write. One is called pumping nylon, it's very good. Um, I would work a little bit, I would s set aside a period in the day just for technical exercises every time before you play any piece, particular piece. But you're doing great. Thank you. Well done. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry.
before you start to play it, okay. can you tell me something? Because I have never heard this piece. About the piece? Yeah. Um, well, it's a Christmas carol, and it's by Barrios. Well, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else? I don't know. Um, it's quite. It's you can either play it slow or fast. Oh, boring. I don't know. I don't know what else is. About I want it. to be amused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not amused. <laughs> I need to know something more. I mean, what's the point of playing a piece you know nothing about? When did he write it? Why would he write a Christmas Carol? Who for? All of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's important to know the context. Maybe. No, not maybe. Surely. <laughs> yeah. So I want you to work on that even okay. before you play me a first note. Learn the piece before you know. Learn about the piece. Yeah. Yes. Learn w the, the context of it. Or even if you don't know the context of the piece, you need to connect it to some sort of imagery. I think it's very important. I think all music is in a way programmatic because whatever we play uh, triggers some sort of imagery in our imagination, mm. doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't do anything to stop that because I think it helps the music. Okay. So please do, do your research. <laughs> I think I know why you don't have nails on the right hand. Yeah. Because you don't think girls would like them. No. <laughs> I used to have a nail, but then it fell off. A nail? Well, I used to have a thumbnail. Uh, the other ones are kind of hard to get. Yeah. No! Well, like, they're hard to keep and they just fall off and stuff. It's, it's what we need, you know? Yeah. And it's something to be proud of even though mine are really girly at the moment because they've just been done. Um, but um, you need to grow some nails. Yeah. And even if you can use some stuff to, to strengthen them, there is a lot of really, really good stuff out there. Um, all the strengtheners and, and things. Um, all of these very... There are things at Boots which are not bad, but in a more upmarket nail salons they have these special formulas for strengthening and proteins and so on and th these things really work right there was something that i was given by um, uh, my friends at the london guitar studio um, it's this new formula for growing nails okay. um, and i haven't used it because that's not what i do i have quite strong nails and i just strengthen them on top but um, she was swearing by it because she has very weak nails. So if you started applying that on your nails while they are growing, they will grow out and then you will be able to, to have nails. I think it's at this point because you are, how old are you? 17. Well, exactly, 17. So if you are serious about playing guitar, you should grow some nails. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, and it will help you a lot with the tone and projection because you know, this big guy with this great guitar, I was expecting suddenly I'm going to be like, whoa, so much sound coming out and there is nothing coming out. I want you to have more sound. Okay. So this shoulder keeps dropping this way. Yeah. And there is tension here. So you just kind of, you need to rebalance your, your sitting position. Maybe slightly higher. So that this shoulder can come up. Okay. Just more natural. Yeah, that's more natural. And then that arm, as we discussed. And you know what? I'm teasing you a little bit. It's because I want you to realize that there is really no point in being stressed. Yeah. I read, read a quote the other day, and I really um, think it applies to everything about playing guitar or whatever you do in life. Um, it says that um, enthusiasm as in enthusiasm, is a combination of two things about enjoying and loving everything that you do, whether it is, whatever it is, if it's playing every note and enjoying that every note. Um, so enjoying the moment together with knowing what your future goal is, where you want to go. So you want to be very successful at playing this piece or you want to be a successful guitar player. I mean, it can be, take so many, many different 
levels. But if one overtakes the other, you have a problem. Okay. Because if your ambition to finish this piece is greater than your enjoyment of the piece, you're going to rush through the whole piece, really not being present with every note, just so that you can reach the end. That can apply to almost anything in life. If your ambition to become a famous classical guitar player is greater than the fact that you are enjoying what you do, you're never going to get there, because it just doesn't work like that. So in situations like this, where you perform in front of people, the one thing to realize is that what's the point in being nervous? Because nobody made you want to play in front of those people. You want to do it and share something special with them because you have a gift. And they are all here for you. Mm -hmm. So never be nervous. It's really a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Really. And, it's, and whenever you feel that you are nervous, just talk yourself through in your head about this. And just say, this is so stupid. Why am I being nervous? It's not going to change anything. I'm going to feel bad. They are going to feel even worse because they have to sit through my playing. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And you see, as soon as you relaxed a little bit, it sounded so much better. So why not just enjoy it? Do you do exercises? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> well, make it more than sometimes. Okay. <laughs> At this stage, when you are a teenager, uh, it's so important to just drill yourself into Exercise. Exercising. Yeah. Because you, need to, you still don't have the muscles. You know, uh, when I was younger, when I was a teenager, I would very often uh, strain myself because uh, the muscles were just not prepared. They were, they were developing and they were, they were ready. Um, and when I remember how, how many times I felt that my hands were hurting, um, it's kind of masochistic. Um, and now I use my hands much more than then. And now I don't have those problems anymore because the muscles have developed. But if I haven't developed them then, I wouldn't have been fine now. Mm. So uh, you have to invest the work in that. And whenever you get stuck on a, on a part of the piece, it's a sign. Isolate, work on it, even if it's for hours, never lose patience and just Get on with your life after you've done it. Mm. Simples. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, Justin. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> this is quite a hard piece. Yeah. It's grade eight. Lovely. So have you performed it for people before? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do you need the music or you know it from memory? Uh, I've learned it from memory. Okay. Right. There's one thing I have to tell you. If you've learned something from memory, trust your memory. And if in a performance you put the music and you learn something from memory, you are going to be not sure about one or the other. <coughs> very nice there is a very nice uh, harmonies and you do very well with that and there are nice contrasts it's lovely. but honestly I really don't want you to sit like that I think it's it just doesn't work um, you have to have your body in the right place in order to be able to play properly and it will change your, your right hand position as well at the moment you are very kind of plucky in the right hand and you shouldn't be Now your nails, they're very long, um, they create a slightly metallic sound, what do you think about that? Yeah, uh, yeah they are a bit long. Are they always that long? Um, yeah, I haven't really. Mm. Show me. They're kind of freaky, <laughs> you know. Um, I really would like you to, and they're very, very flat. Is that deliberate? No, not really, no. Just no. Do you shape your nails at all? No. Yeah, okay. 
you need to. And they're very strong, which is lucky. I would love you to experiment with nail shapes. Because a good nail shape can actually make a wonder with the right hand technique. And if the nail is slightly not in the right place, the whole right hand feels disturbed and feels very, very different. Um, so essential, essential to us is to have the correct setup of the right hand nails. But I would set it up by firstly sitting properly. So can we try to sit properly, please? Again. Okay, there. One slip. This one a little bit further. There. Look, here. Okay. Is that uncomfortable? A bit, yeah. Yeah, at first, but you have to get used to it. Um, okay, good. But, but it's much, much more, much, much more. Um, that's how you should sit. Um, and don't sit like that again, please. Now, I want to hear the opening once again. Your left hand, by the way, is fantastic. Great. Right hand is not because of your sitting position. Do you know what rubato is? Rubato in Italian means stealing. In music it means the stealing of time. So it means that you are pulling and pulling and stretching and I love stuff like that. It just makes you manipulate the notes in a way that you create shapes because the notes are just the notes is the base the base of, of, of the interpretation so the notes, the fingers, everything being in the right place and then you take the notes and then you are drawing with them, you are creating creating movements and shapes um, and what you are doing at the moment you are playing the notes very accurately and I, and I, and I, and I like that it's great I just want you to be a little bit more cheeky now. So, I love the way you play the first chord. You can be more free. You hear the difference? of this. It's kind of that clunk, 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 instead of... It's better, but, but it can still be better. Because all of the lines in, in music are there to be played, but not just to be played, they are there to be sung. And in Torobo, which is such, a, it's such, such romantic music, it's so out there. Uh, you can't really do too much. Just I want to be a little bit more romantic. That's all. Okay? Uh, Please ask me any questions that you may have. It's going very well, by the way. I think when you fix those two, two three things, when you sort out your nails, when you start sitting properly, um, and when you try to awaken that inner thing a little bit, it's going to be great. Questions? How do I know which parts to use rubato in and when to eh. normally? The ones where it says to you in your mind and when you, when you hear the music that that's where you should do it. This is the difference between you and me. And that's the essence of what makes you you and what makes me me. And nobody can teach you that. I've just given you one example of where it naturally 
for me felt that that's the place where you could pull it a little bit and give it more character. Uh, but everybody has a different sense of rubato. It's like you like one thing, I like the other thing. So, uh, also in this piece, there are a lot of harmonic changes, which uh, you do very well. Um, and I would just wish that before they happen, you would emphasize them a little bit more with the dynamics. Do you know what I mean? of character because you are not spreading any of those chords. I think that, that when you have a chord, when you spread a chord, you immediately put an emphasis on it. And when you have it becomes much more characterful. If every chord was this, it would just not happen. It just wouldn't, wouldn't, it just doesn't, it's not good. So, can you try that, please? Try. But can you can you do just a spread on one chord? I just want to hear how you spread a chord. Just take that chord. F major. Wait. I just want to hear how you spread. Good. Again. Now play the But slower, slower spread. Don't be shy about it. Yes, it's better. Much better. Because it, it, it emphasizes the dominance. So in the piece, if you could identify those special chords, those special colors. Here you have pizzicato. Here you have a beautiful melody. Here you have a flamenco scale. Here you have a big rasgado. That's what this piece is all about and I need to hear it. And when you are the audience, when you are listening, you have to be so clear to them about what you want with the music. Because if you just play for yourself, in yourself, there's no, there's no interest. And these things help you, help the ear of the audience attach to what you are doing. And them going, okay, if, if I'm now playing, what's next? What's next? And then what's next? And then you surprise them. Always the best plan, trust me. Music is a beautiful thing and has to be made colorful and full of life. And pieces like this, all pieces actually, everything that you play, from Dowland to the, to the modern day composer, you can totally turn into a total amazing experience for you and for the audience, just by being creative on the notes and on, on, on what you emphasize. And in this piece there is a lot to emphasize, so I just want you to think more creatively, and that, that, that's all. But you sound great. Um, nails are a must, sitting position is a must. And when you practice, don't practice just to practice. Sometimes practice by the music on the table without the guitar, just by going through the score and saying, oh, going through your mind with a piece, and just circle a chord which sounds interesting, like the one we picked, and say, maybe I spread it, maybe I'll spread it like this, maybe like that, maybe with the thumb, maybe with the back of the nail, it depends. You are creating. When you are performing, you are creating, you are painting. So do that. I really, really, really think you can do great if you start doing stuff, stuff like that. Okay, thank you. Thanks. But the main one really is to just, to just always be present in what you are doing, to just always enjoy what you are doing, and, and to really try to not get stressed. That's, that, that's the, one, the one thing that is completely paralyzing. Um, and I used to get so stressed before I started to 
have a big career. And then when I finally got there, uh, there was so much push and there was so much um, expectation and um, it, it was kind of a shock to the system. So I would get stressed. And it would make me stop from enjoying why I was there in the first place. In concerts, I would always enjoy mm. because that's where I feel most comfortable and that's where I feel that I really wouldn't like to be anywhere else. Um, but um, I would build myself up towards mm. it in a way that just wasn't fun. Um, so I decided I want to have fun. Um, and, 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 that's, and that really helps. It's very, very important for you to personally connect with a piece of music, whatever that piece might be, because only then it makes sense for you to play it for other people. Uh, the exception to this, of course, is the stuff that you need to do for your technical development. But when it comes to repertoire and recitals, I always choose to play the pieces which I personally like very much. Uh, because if I don't like the piece, then you will like it even less. Um, and uh, the time on the stage is very, very precious, and we are all there to have a great time. So there's no need to do something that is not responding to you or to the audience. Um, so of occasionally I hear pieces played by my colleagues or um, which, th which people send to me um, to check out. And, and I really like that. And whenever I respond to a piece, whenever I think, oh, this is really nice, uh, I, I get the score and in, in the little free time that I have, sometimes, sometimes I, 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 I open the score and just play through it and, and hope that one day I will put it in my repertoire. Um, so um, very, very instinctively, that's the answer. But you know what? Um, I thought that guitar was really the coolest instrument in the world because you can make so much noise and so much sound and so much, you can have so much fun with it. You can sing songs. But then I heard classical guitar and I really, really, really was completely blown away by that. Because the skill and the, and, and, and the way to play this instrument is so beyond anything else that I just fell completely in love with it and, and decided to do it for the rest of my life. Thank mm -hmm. you.